Hey guys, this is Sam, and today in the workshop, uh, due to popular request, we have uh, an assembly video for the TM Recoil SCAR. Uh, so this is the uh, this happens to be the SCAR L. Uh, it's pretty much identical. A couple of small, minor little additions that the H has, um, but uh, we'll uh, we'll go over them when uh, we get to those positions. So, uh, this one has just had a one of our uh, services, a recoil service, so it's pretty much um, stock in terms of the, uh, the uh, switch assembly and um, the gear set and everything, that's still, that's still stock, so we've, we have tuned it up to be nice and efficient and smooth. So, I'm just going to, last little bit, just give the... Uh, the switch assembly, a little wipe down there. Get all of the, all of that nonsense away. That's the uh, the dielectric grease that Tokyo Marui use. It's uh, it's fantastic. It does help um, slow down the wear, but after time it gunks up. So uh, there we go. Now the first thing we're going to do is just chuck on our selector plate on the back there just like that so we'll get our switch assembly here and uh, let's have a little look for the screw I can see where that has gone you've jumped away on me have you typical ha ah. here we are mustn't lose that one so let's get down to business We'll uh, chuck our switch assembly in just like that, and the wires do stick out the front there on the scar. And put the negative line, the black line, round to the back, and the positive line around the front like that. And let's get our pokey screwdriver. Give it a twizzle. Oh, she likes that. And we're in all solid. Now, while I remember, don't want to forget this little doodah. So that's um, that's the little block that holds the spring, keeps everything in position for the empty mag detection system. And let's uh, lube up a couple of little parts here. So this is our, oh, there we go. Trying to escape. Not want back in there. So this is our cutoff lever, just a little light coating of super lube grease there. You know, I am so not used to putting these back in. We usually get a spectre in one of these, so don't do what I did. <laughs> do this. Put the cutoff lever in first, like that. There we are. Then the switch assembly. And screw that down. That's one of the kind of wider flathead screws. There we go. Check it can still move nicely. And now, now we put our switch assembly in place. Sorted. Before I forget, we'll just chuck our spring in there. And that sounds like we've got a customer who's just parked up outside. So there might be a little break in this video while I go and open the door. It's going to knock any second now. So let's just get the anti reversal latch in. If, of course, I can find the spring, which I cannot. Do, 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 do. Where have you gone? <laughs> there we go. Jumped off the table. Another part that just, just didn't feel like going back in the gearbox today. So, we'll chuck our spur gear in. Now, I've already shimmed and greased everything. 
Then we'll chuck the anti reversal latch in. There you go. In you go, love. And we'll just hold our anti reversal latch down and pop the bell gear on. Just making sure it's into its slot. And now the sector gear. There we go. Now you want the uh, the teeth that pull the piston at the bottom and then the tap it can to the right just so it's not getting in the way when we put the other parts back in place. So now we'll get our piston assembly, uh, cylinder assembly with the nozzle. Just make sure that the uh, the nozzle has a little kind of notch, a little key in it and that matches up with the little notch in the tappet plate there. So we'll make sure they are going together and that keeps the little feeding kind of cut out on the end of the nozzle down where it needs to be. So we'll chuck you in place and put our piston assembly back in. Now I've ported this, the, uh, the piston head there. We've got a nice Eagle 6 M95 spring greased up spring guide and um, we have corrected the angle of engagement taken off the uh, second and third teeth and we have uh, a modified low neck cylinder head uh, from Air Lab with the uh, Sobothane pad so that is going to correct the angle of engagement perfectly there we go now before I forget <laughs> again Let's just uh, get our trigger in. So little spring sits in like that and it's got a little handy notch that you can put the end in that just holds it all together as one unit. So we'll pop you in place, just push the, the spring down. It'll pop off the notch, but that's just for uh, easy installation. And the last thing we're going to do before we put the top cover on, just hold the spring guide in place and on the back, we'll hook it first. Now what I like to do is just hold the back up slightly so we're not pushing the back all the way together and then push it forward slightly and that will allow it to go straight down on our cylinder head. Are you going to line up nicely for me? Not today, you're taking a video. What's going on here? Yep, nothing wrong there. So, it's just not liking me today. Ah. There we are, that was an unusually snug fit. But anyway, all together now. So that's it, we'll just check that the nozzle can move. Just check our piston is moving and on the rails, which it is, so that's good. And now we can get our screws in place. So, screw them up, so we've got our Phillips screw here and our T10s terminator screws in here. Got our T10 driver. And we'll chuck them in. Make sure that you do put the um, make sure you do match the threads up on the screws with the original Tokimori thread um, on the gearbox shell. If you don't, then you'll just cut a new thread uh, through, which is fine the first time you do it, but uh, it will start eating away at the material there, and you'll end up with uh, very loose uh, screws that just won't torque down properly. So we're going to get our empty mag detection kind of cutoff system. So this little doohickey goes in first, like this, and that just sits there. 
This is our actual lever for disengaging the trigger. That just sits on top. And our spring. So we've got a prong facing this way and then a prong here facing down. What we're going to do is just pop this on like this. So you can see the bottom prong is sitting down here. It's not sitting in the block here yet. Um, but it will just sit there unless it's damaged. It'll sit there nicely like that. We can pop our screw on. Check it's all moving, which it is. And then just pull that round and into the little hole there. Sorted. So the last thing we'll do here is just fold our wiring over and put our wire guide on. That's just going to hold everything exactly where it needs to sit when it's installed in the lower receiver. So next we're going to chuck just a drop of grease on the top there and mix it in with just a drop of silicon oil. That's going to give us a nice lightweight grease, just really thin. Rub most of it off, just glide over. And that'll mean our recoil weight can sit on there nicely. Now you can see this has all been polished up. Hello, can you see me? Kind of hard to get a face shot, but uh, oh, that's my beard. Ah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is all polished up. Now we've got our uh, buffer pad here, goes with the black buffer bit towards the front, and then the metal part acts as a protective mat for the uh, for the buffer there. I'm going to put our rod in and this has a little notch at the front and that lines up with our screw here and then when you do put that screw in place that will uh, that will hold the rod static like that it all matches up so we're just going to push it out a little bit and put the uh, the springs on the back so you see we've got two springs here the main one and then a little kind of um, buffer spring uh, to really take that um, take the last little bit and accelerate that much more quickly than the big spring can uh, can manage so just make sure that that's on the rod and then it just locks back into place like that push a rod through and we're sorted what I like to do just chuck a little bit of grease on there that helps just dampen any kind of pinging vibration -y sound from the uh, spring wobbling around in there when you shoot it so now we can get part of the blowback mech on so we've got it all hooked on like that just as it came off so that just sits in there and then this make sure that we get the uh, little notch there on the inside just like that so that little hook there that's got to go on the inside of the mech and that hold everything in place got two little screws here holds our plate down like that. Again, don't over torque them, don't over tighten them, tighten them. Just just a little twisty tight there. Now while we're here, um, you can see that is where our nozzle spring goes, just in there. So we're going to make sure that's pulled all the way forward push the spring in as much as it'll go easily and then little tiny flathead screwdriver see if we can see this just in there gonna 
pull it back and then lever it in like that and that is in perfectly. Now the SCAR H just has a little plate across there with a screw that goes in that thread there. Just got to unscrew that, put the spring in and then back on. So now this this little piece here, this gets lost all the time. Every other scar that comes through here that's been worked on by someone else, this little bin is missing. So that is our C-clip for our body pin, for the front receiver pin. And uh, that just holds the front receiver pin in place. So we're going to put that in its little recess just in there. Just in there like that. Just about see that there. And then put our top plate on and that is going to hold our clip in place and it's going to hold the rod in place when we tighten down all these screws. Again, not too tight, just tight enough to stop them vibrating loose. There we go. And basically done. That's pretty much the gearbox assembled. Um, yeah, so that's that. Now let's get it in the uh, receiver. So we've got our little receiver here, and we're going to poke the wires through. And just get the uh, get the trigger through the hole there. So we're going to put it about halfway in. Make sure that both selectors are on safe. Just hold them there. You'll probably need to just just kind of push the uh, the selector plate at the back there just to let it slide into the receiver. Um, and you'll want that you want the uh, selector plate pushed all the way forward before we push it. Push the gearbox shell all the way in. We're just going to slide in a bolt release. Let's do it the right way up, how I usually do this. There we go. So, now we can get everything in, just like that. Now the SCAR H has a little black plate that sits at the, that sits at the back here and just kind of hooks in this little plasticky bit here. This is a little bit extended to allow the, uh, the plate to sit at the back there. So I'm not sure if you can quite see that in there, but uh, the bolt release there, the lever on the bolt release is sitting above the uh, little gray lever there of the empty mag detection system. So that's how you know that's incorrectly. And then we can chuck our body pin in. That'll click into place with the C-clip there. And this will all hold nicely now. So we're gonna chuck our grip on. Just make sure that the negative wire there is sitting all nice and flush against the gearbox. I'm just using the, the round of the screwdriver there just to make sure it's pressed all the way in. And got our screws in there already. So let's poke the wires through. Through the holes like that. And then on. So let's screw these down. Nice and easy. And the other one at the front there. Sorted. So now what we're going to do with these wires is have the negative sitting on this side and then when the gun is when the uh, receiver is sitting like this we're going to push the positive line to the back so it sits just like that let's just uh, 
fork it round so it clears that screw. That'll stop it getting pinched by the motor height spring. And then so that's going to sit on that side of the um, screw kind of shaft there that the that the, uh, the grip plate screws into. And that's going to sit on this side, just like that. Now we'll get our motor in. So red to the front, black to the top. This is our negative terminal here. So we'll shut you in. Height adjustment is working fine. It's all nice and smooth. And then we'll push the spade connectors onto the tabs. You're being a bit silly. So just a little bit of extra persuasion to get you in place. There we go. Sorted. Just needed a little precision adjustment with some pliers. I find that happens sometimes. Sometimes things just need a little bit of precision adjustment with a pair of pliers. So let's get our motor plate kind of height adjustment disc thingy there. And what we're going to do is put the grip onto that and turn it this way up. And that stops the little disc falling down, getting stuck to the side of the uh, motor. So big screw at the back. Be very, very careful with these threads. They are plastic. They will strip if you tighten them too much. You really, you really don't need to tighten this very tight at all. Just, just when you start to feel resistance, stop. Especially with this front screw. It does not need to be very tight at all. Just start to feel that resistance, stop. And we're done. Selectors all sorted. Nice. So now we'll get the stock on. Just chuck my tools up to the side. Let's pack away the lube. Won't be needing that till tonight. <laughs> and get the stock in. So there's only one way you can hook up these wires, so there's no confusion there. We'll just, yeah, just pull them out a little. So we'll just push the stock up, hook in the wires like so. There we are, and then they get just tucked down into the receiver. There is just a little space for them to sit just so that kind of one and then most of the second wire are just tucked into the receiver like that. We're going to turn it over, fold the stock and get our long countersunk screw into the bottom and then a little piddly kind of square head you know, at the top there. Take our Allen key, and this is our is this two and a half mil Allen key on the top here, and the same on the bottom. Sorted. Just check that the wire is moving properly here. And we're done. So now, oh, there go my tweezers, baby. So that is the complete lower assembly assembled. Now let's get on to the top half. Now we haven't done any work on the uh, on the hop, but um, what I'm going to do is stop the video here. I'm going to disassemble this and then I will show you how to reassemble it. So, see you in a sec. So, now we have the complete 
uh, top end and front all disassembled. So this is it. We're all empty. Now let's uh, let's get on to putting this back together. So the first thing we're going to do is just chuck our kind of mock bolt on the frame assembly, on the blowback frame assembly, and slide this into the upper receiver. Now this, and you do have to disassemble it all the way down to this level, this is where we can change which side our um, charging handle is on. So we're at the back here, this is going back on the same side that it started on. And you're going to go in nicely for me. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. So just in and then twist and that locks in place. And then slide all the way forward. So what we're going to do now, and you've got to be careful of this piece. This is our little blowback lever. And that's the little catch that gets it from the little kind of sprung nub, this little sprung nub here. So this goes just in this space here. So just in between these two blocks here, this space here. So we're going to shove this, so this is all the way forward. I'm going to sit you like this and put our the end of the barrel in here and that will just go straight down into the right part just like that so that is how it sits you can push down and now that will not go back unless we push the barrel down and back, making sure you get it lined up on the front there. So this goes all the way back until you get it lined up with all three holes just there. You need all three of them to be lined up. Um, I have put it back together when only two of them have been lined up like that. And that was, uh, that was amusing. So yep, make sure all three holes are lined up like that. That should be sitting in there like that. And uh, yeah, so then what we'll do is we'll put in a little front support block. Now this has uh, a beveled edge on one side, just here, and then a flat edge on the other side. So the flat edge goes out the way. The beveled edge is literally just to allow you to kind of push it in. So we're gonna move the barrel forward beveled edge just allows you to kind of more easily get it in place. It's a snug fit. I'm just going to get you nice and flush on the end. Push the barrel back, line up all the holes, and then put our little bits on the side. So we use a two and a half mil for the middle one can just use a 3 mil allen key for this and we'll do the same on the other side Do do do, do. There we go that's about as tight as they need to be. So last little bit, we've got our screws for this little front support block here. And that's on the three mil again. And the other side. There we go. Sorted. Last but not least, we'll put the rail back on. 
another three mil jobby. It's about as tight as they need to be. And then let's get the barrel back in. Now the last difference between the Scar Reach, aside from the longer receiver, longer stock, blah blah blah, all the obvious parts is the Scar Reach just has a little plastic spacer that just sits on this side of the spring, slides on after the springer. So slide our barrel in. What we're gonna do, we're gonna quarter turn towards us, push it in place, and then a quarter turn back and it'll just lock in like that. Very nice and easy. So when we're putting the two halves together, just make sure that our wires are tucked away on the back there. And you just slide them on. The only thing to watch for is just to make sure that this little sprung rod here sits, there's a little hole just in here. So that just needs to sit in that hole like that. I'll just show you again, just in that hole just in that hole like that and then when you close it all together your charging handle will ping and that means that you've assembled it all correctly so what we're going to do is chuck in our screws on the side do -do -do. a little bit awkward trying to film this so get you in Again, don't need to be crazy tight. There we go. And the other side. Now you'll notice I'm not doing this with the gun lying flat because on this side, we've got the deflector and stock latch and uh, that's plastic and it does like to snap off. So I don't really want to be leaning on that. And on the other side, we've got a charging handle which is plastic in a plastic frame so yeah we don't want to be breaking that so now we're almost done we've just got a screw to put in here same as the front three mil allen key and in she goes and on this side, same again. Doop de doo. Let's just get her tight, sorted. And last but not least, we'll just chuck the very last screw, 3 mil again, in the top there. And we're done. That is one. Fully reassembled Tokimuri Recoil Scar L. All nice and shiny. So yeah, I hope that's uh, I hope that's uh, helped you guys. And um, any comments, questions, chuck them in the uh, section below. And um, yeah, we'll uh, chat to you there. See you later.